Here we are 27 episodes later and season 1 for Mission Yozakura Family has completed. These past few months have been quite the ride looking at how the story unfolded and with the completion of Act 1 we leave off not only on a major victory but with one of the best Hayao and Mutsumi dedicated chapters. With Jump Festa coming up we're bound to hear more news about where we're headed for the anime soon but right now episodes 26 and 27 are how we close out this season with Tayo giving it everything he has for the sake of his family. Chapter coverage wise for episode 26, starting from 80 all the way up to the middle of 83 was the content range. At this point, there was truly nothing left to stop Tayo from confronting Destiny as we immediately get him and Kawashida confronting each other head on. No communication, no backup for the time being, and the result of this seed sowing project is now in Tayo's hands. If there's one thing Kawashida will do is keep his composure even in the main character character's presence, but neither are budging on their position. This providing an opportunity for something new to break this deadlock, as suddenly the two's bloomings begin to resonate with each other. An unusual situation as we never got whiff of this possibility during the blooming breakdowns, and what we arrive at is a moment in history. Specifically, Kawashita's past as we see him with darker hair during his time as a doctor. He isn't alone though, and as I mentioned last week, for his research on the Yozakura family, he obviously obviously would need some form of test subject. Little did we know that the subject would be the first ever head of the Yozakura family, Subomi Yozakura. Quite the bombshell, and we did see her tease in the OP briefly, and come episode 26, we finally see her main debut, half of the body covered in cherry blossoms. We see that in her dialogue, she speaks of one day being perceived as normal, and is willing to sacrifice her descendants to reach that goal. I'm sure a lot of anime onlys lean forward in their seeing this because now we understand just how deep this interconnection between the Yozakuras and the Tompopo is. Before we get any more context however, we're yanked back into the current situation and get some clarification of what exactly just happened. With Kawashida having Tsubomi's blood within him and Tayo having Mutsumi's, the minimum requirement of resonating are already present and this mission allowed the dots to finally connect. Tsubomi Yozakura is in cahoots with Kawashida all for the sake of her dream. This mission bestowed to him has been going on since the beginning of the family's existence and he still plans to carry it out now. Though to Tayo's dismay, anything that threatens Mutsumi is an obvious red flag and with a quick stabbing rain to gain some distance, the battle moves on into stage 2 with the declaration that he will stop him and this project. Tayo may not understand the full picture of events quite yet but right now it's all about how you act like he's always done. Pulling into chapter 81, unfortunately that declaration is already encountering a bit of trouble as the attacks Kawashida has landed have more than one purpose. There's a reason why when people do blood transfusions, they don't mix different types of blood as the old and current head's blood conflicts internally. It looks as if some form of large tumor is growing out of him and as clarified by Kawashida, it's a deadly poison only to him. Kawashida so far is up on the scoreboard and what's more is that he tries to just justify the process of the seed sowing project, claiming that it's gentle in comparison to what's occurring within Tayo and how everyone inheriting this power will usher in a new era in society. One that is less dependent on one another's collectiveness and will reduce the conflict born within it. All of this capability is why he was so invested in Tsubomi's dream and is also why he was willing to gamble his own life as we pull back into the flashback once more. We know that a losing side of war will ensure to rid of anything controversial in order to ease the consequences, and the existence of both Kawashida and Tsubomi were on the chopping block. His wits managing to outsmart his superiors, and when almost biting the dust, Tsubomi bestows him a second chance which we can see to be his blooming now. The rest is pretty much history, and to seal the deal, Kawashida goes for another resonance, though this time these memories get a lot darker. Over the years, the existence of the Tom Popo has claimed the lives of thousands thousands of people. Those who are full of greed, those who are innocent, and those who have been sacrificed in the center of this storm, and Kawashida is trying to offer Tayo a gift of mercy. Once more, the odds are just not looking good, and for a brief moment, Tayo does consider that perhaps this liberation from all of this might not be so bad. All the grief and pain evaporating, well who would pass the option up, but we must remember that at this point in his life, he isn't simply living for just himself anymore. What ends up 
up serving as his lifeline turns out to be the very cherry blossom ring pair that started it all with episode 1. Just like we saw during the house invasion, Mutsumi's life can stimulate the lives of those who share her blood. It's the perfect pick me up to remind Tayo that he is not alone in this battle and in the nick of time he's right back on his feet. Fighting for a future where he and Mutsumi can live together is what stopping the Tompopo is all about and with a brief anime only addition with the action we lead into the daybreak attack sequence. Effectively destroying all the silos of Hazakura and rendering the end of the seed sowing project. Or at least that's what we thought. Far as the manga spread goes, definitely a lot less catastrophic in the anime in my opinion. However, the cut leading up to it was very clean, so I will give it that. The final push rallied on by Mutsumi in spirit, but even then, it's not quite over yet. Desperate times call for desperate measures as Kawashida decides to get a little big. At this point, he's got nothing to lose, becoming a substitute tank for the Hazakura and is now a biological ticking time bomb. The peak of his power being used to its utmost capability, and this scale is one that Tayo cannot climb on his own. Thankfully, family has arrived, ending off chapter 82. Unfortunately, they did cut the color page off from chapter 83, but the rest of the episode I think is pretty much self-explanatory. Combined attacks and efforts in the face of the major make or break. Towards the end of the episode, we see Tayo catching a glimpse of what appears to be a faint thread, and with the signal to kill Ichiro, episode 26 ends with formation Sakura roots being used as the final plan of attack. As for the climax of the season, the rest of chapter 83 up to 85 were adapted, with the staff pulling back to chapter 18's Yozakura wedding reception for the second half of the episode. A few little adjustments and new bits in here as well, and a surprise announcement coming this morning. As for the episode, we kick right off with Sakura roots. No time wasted as Tayo gets flung into the thick of it as mentioned last week, and it's a team effort till the end. Everyone's contribution allows Tayo to pursue the very root of the issue right beneath Kawashida's location. It would appear that our final boss has a bit of a sustained power source with his body being connected to Rei Yozakura. To the last drop, Kawashida plans to use her corpse as a means to an end, but today is where all this madness ends. Every single thing that has occurred throughout this season has solidified Tayo's resolve to be the equivalent of his own blooming, granting him the conviction to grab a hold of these threads and just like episode 1, take control of the situation. Therefore, a separating the connection between the two with Mutsumi at the center of his strength, and with the OP also playing as the kickoff, this is how you deliver a classic moment. Overall, I'd say that while Sakura Roots was pretty one to one, the pulling of the threads was very solid, especially with the art. Reiji Kawashima delivering a really great VA performance as well, and I hope that anime onlys recognize now that Tayo's blooming can be used in both offense and defense going forward. We will continue to see an evolution for it, but for for now, we can understand that there's more than one way to use it. Pulling us into chapter 84, and with the connection severed, it's pretty much GG as the family sets up for Tayo's Kanrai lightning strike. In his final moments, we see Kawashira and Tsubomi have one more exchange. A twisted bittersweet farewell, but there is one crucial piece of info residing in Tsubomi's dialogue. She mentions how she will get him to take possession of all the knowledge gained. Could him be Momo perhaps, and even then, we know Momo answers to somebody else based on the train conversation between him and Kawashida. Just more questions for the long haul, but no matter how many years pass, make sure not to forget it. Kawashida unconscious and the Hazakura fading into the air. At last, Operation Frontlines is now completed, and the fourth objective of retrieving Rei Yozakura's body is completed as well. It's been a long and hard fought battle, but surprisingly, Momo didn't show up at all. Thankfully, Bon is on the scene to have a bit of a man to man pulling us into chapter 85. Momo's appearances have always been a bit more on the quiet side and it would appear that even the Tom Popo were a means to an end for his own agenda. Even with the body retrieved, he remains in possession of Rei's heart and as we know, the heart can still be used to produce so many. Two fathers not willing to back down and a powerful brief exchange from Bonds to Capo settles the issue with a stalemate with Momo withstanding the attack and fading off into the wind. Once again, Again, more questions instilled into the future, but with that, now the battle is truly at its end. The rest of the half is more of a wind down. Mutsumi relaying the post battle developments with Kawashida arrested, the Tom Popo members awaiting trial, etc. etc. They did cut out a couple of family moments with
fourth the chapter in between Mutsumi heading out the Tayo, so make sure to go read chapter 85 for those little moments if you care. The rest of chapter 85 plays out with a very calm scene at Rei's grave. Tayo and Mutsumi just take a moment to just talk about everything that has happened, and for Mutsumi to show a little bit of appreciation for bringing her mother back home. Even far away, her presence will always be with her family, and the two have a really cute moment together as the daily life now returns to a little bit more of the normal. They also added a brief scene of Mutsumi mentioning that she needs to go pay her respects to the Asano family as well. Chapter 85 is one of my favorites, and from an adaptation standpoint, it gets a nice pass from me, signaling the conclusion of Act 1. For my anime onlys out there, let me know how you enjoyed Act 1 of the story down below. I am curious to hear your thoughts. As for the second half of the episode, we have the long-awaited Yozakura wedding reception chapter. For a while now, I was worried that it may get cut in the anime after all, but placing it here makes it hit a whole lot harder. With Rei back home now, even she can attend the wedding, and it feels a lot more conclusive in comparison to it happening at chapter 18 in the manga. Some little additions were in this half of the episode as well, with all the allies we've come to know being able to attend the wedding. Bon was also the old guy in disguise, rather than those two characters be separate people in comparison to the manga. Additions like this absolutely work here, and the main highlight of course being Rei's final message for her family in the future. It was cute to see the family as little people, and of course bittersweet with Rei's message to Tayo not only in thanks but to take care of her daughter. I find it a lot more impactful knowing what they've been through, and honestly was a good choice as far as rearrangement decisions go. Together with guns in hand, the season closes out under a hail of bullets as what is anything Yozakura related without a little bit of insanity in the mix. Protecting Mutsumi as they walk down the aisle, and with a final perfectly drawn Tayo holding the yay, the season closes out with the final panel of chapter 18 drawn wide. Now let's get the obvious elephant in the room out the way, but season 2 for Mission Yozakura family has been announced this morning. Bit of a surprise considering I was not expecting to hear a single thing about a season 2 till Jump Festa, but it just shows that the demand for it in Japan is there and Silverlink is staying committed. I've got a lot to say about this adaptation, but for today, I just want to simply say thank you to the Yozakura staff for their 27 weeks of hard work. It ain't easy, and I do hope the staff comes back stronger than before. If you are somebody who would like to read the manga, then please continue from chapter 86, or if you want to see all that was cut, feel free to reread from the beginning and go at it from there. I'll be back for season 2, but for now, I'm gonna go to sleep first. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna bring me to the end of coverage for season 1. As always, thank you very much for watching, and make sure to let me know all your thoughts about season 1 in the comment section down below. Stay safe out there, until we meet again in season 2.